For the last two months, I've been using Starlink instead of Xfinity for both business and home use. And just recently, Starlink sent me an email about a new product, the Starlink Mini. And at the time of recording, this product isn't even on their website, but it promises to be a more compact Starlink uh, that Keeley is powered by DC instead of AC. Now you can get conversion kits to be able to mount this in an RV or a boat or even an airplane and run it off of DC directly, but you still have a much larger antenna base. Actually, it's several hundred antennas, but you have a much larger panel. This one is significantly smaller, and frankly, I'm quite impressed at how small this is, but we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna give you my first initial impressions, and we're going to test it. I'm also gonna to touch on pricing. Now, this thing is pretty compact, and we're gonna go ahead and open it right here. Alrighty. Looks like we have a mounting bracket. This is an AC power supply, but again, this is really designed to be powered off of DC. Oh my gosh. This is even smaller than I thought it was gonna be. And here is the actual array. That's like iPad Pro size. <laughs> For context, here's a MacBook Air. That's insane. Now the cool thing about this is while it's at a similar price point than the, the larger Starlink, uh, the service for it is only a $40 correction, $30 add-on if you already have a Starlink for residential use. So you can have internet on this with uh, some priority data and you pay additional for each gigabyte um, for 30 bucks a month, which is pretty awesome. Now the key thing that I'm interested in testing out is that no question this is gonna work for RVs or tractors or UTVs or just any remote type of vehicle, as this is designed to be on the mobile plan for that $30 per month. But what I'm curious about is how it will perform at higher speeds. You see, one of the things that Starlink does is they limit uh, the functionality of their array. If you go over 100 miles per hour, the array will shut off. It won't provide internet service at all. And a big reason for this is that they want you to upgrade to their uh, aviation series of arrays, which cost uh, tens of thousands of dollars per month. Uh, and over $100,000 to install. And it's really designed for airlines. They do have a, a newer version that's designed for business jets. But even that, I think the cheapest that plan was offered was at $4,000 a month, which compared to GoGo, -Go, which uses uh, either satellites or uh, hor vertical arrayed cell service, uh, is significantly faster and cheaper, but still quite expensive and just not approachable for the general aviation community. Now there is a video, interestingly, of uh, a popular YouTuber, I'm gonna link it down in the description, who is an aviator, he flies his uh, Kit Fox, and uh, he's been running the full-size Starlink with the DC conversion kit in his airplane. And as long as he's going slower than 100 miles an hour, he's able to operate in the air, and he can definitely use it when he's on the ground. Now this is great if you're in a remote area, uh, because, well, you may not have internet services from cellular, which, while well, you can get uh, weather usually from the radio, usually from something like um, a local, local radio weather stations for aviation, you don't have the same uh, degree of understanding that you are going to by looking at actually a, a visual radar. Um, and that's where internet can be really handy for these bush pilots. So this might be something where they have uh, disabled that speed limit or perhaps increased it to something that makes it uh, available to use in general aviation, at least piston airplanes, but is not competing with their business jet uh, or airliner kind of models of Starlink dishes. So we're definitely gonna test that, but let's go ahead and get this guy fired up and do some benchmarks. In the box, we have the panel itself, a DC power cable, an AC wall adapter, and a pole mounting adapter to mount this on a pole. Now, without even testing this, I can already tell you as a Starlink user, this is gonna be a great tool for RVs, boats, remote application. Maybe you're putting this on your Jeep and you're going off-roading. Really anything mobile, even backpacking, it's small enough that you could put this on a backpack. Now, I'm curious to see the performance of this. And a big reason for that is it's a smaller array. My suspicion is that we're gonna have uh, better performance from the larger arrays in severe weather. That is one thing with Starlink I have noticed using the larger unit is that during severe weather, not light rain or medium rain, but severe weather, 
uh, it, we do have some performance challenges and we'll have some pings drop. Now, if you've ever set up a Starlink device before, this is gonna be basically the same process. One call out I wanna mention is that if you're connected to another Starlink device and your Wi-Fi network name is Starlink, make sure you either leave that network or disable your existing Starlink, unplug it, as there will be a conflict there and your phone won't automatically join the new Starlink network name Starlink. Setup was a breeze and one thing I did notice is that this downloaded its firmware update much quicker than uh, the larger Starlink, but that just may be due to software optimizations that I haven't yet seen on the larger Starlink. Now, performance is very similar, if not identical. I'm seeing north of 100 megabits per second download and right around 10 to 20 megabits per second upload. Latency is what I've come to expect with Starlink, hovering right around 30 milliseconds with occasional blips to higher latency. Still significantly better than what we've seen from you know, traditional satellite services. Now, when it comes to reliability, I've only been testing this for a day, and so I can't speak to how reliable it is, and it is a brand new product, and it's one that they've not even made public, at least at the time of recording this video. But I suspect, it being a smaller panel, it is going to suffer during severe weather more than a larger panel will. Now, I've been using the larger panel in severe weather here in Florida, actually just in its ground configuration, just like I've been testing this one. And those are the numbers that I have from that type of configuration. I suspect you will have more reliability if you're mounting this up on an antenna. But in this case, uh, this one is probably not gonna be used like that. It's gonna be very low on a vehicle or on the ground for something like camping. But I'm excited to use this. I'm planning on uh, taking it in the airplane and seeing how it performs in terms of speed. And we're also going to do some more testing with it. Now, while this isn't a comprehensive review as I haven't had enough time with the Mini, I must say I'm impressed and kind of excited that Starlink has been able to compact so much tech into a small box. Now, yes, having a wireless router be small is nothing new, but cramming their very, very cutting edge technology that uses hundreds of antennas uh, to connect to a satellite that's going at nearly 17,000 miles an hour and then switching between satellites very frequently into such a small enclosure is pretty impressive. And it makes me wonder, what is the future of satellite connectivity? Are we going to see more higher bandwidth applications in something like a MacBook or even an iPhone? I think the future for satellite is a bright one. And I think this is just evidence of that. Now, we're going to continue to use and test this. And besides the ones that are obvious, like mobile, uh, RVs, or airplanes, I think there's a number of other applications for this, gate controllers, remote security applications, and other ones that we have yet to discover. And we're gonna keep you guys up to date as to if we find anything unusual about this. Now, my suspicion is that the one caveat that we are going to see is I don't think this will perform as well in severe weather as the full-size Starlink. But we'll have to see what that looks like and report to you guys as to what we find. But comment down below what your questions are. What do you wanna know about the Starlink Mini? And we'll do our best to answer them either in the comments or in a follow-up video. But until I see you guys again, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.